So here I am on a nice Monday morning. I'm getting ready to do the things that I do on a Monday and my friend Zach calls and he says, Ryan, I have my tiny house. I need to tow it to Durango. Do you want to go with me? And I'm like, hmm. I've been on some last minute adventures before, but this is truly last minute. He is in the car coming this way. So I got to pack. Couple pairs of socks, drone, camera stuff, shaver, deodorant, sunglasses. Sorry, bike, you're not going. Running shoes, water bottle, dump the trash. Uh, okay. Now I just wait for Zach. Which could take a long time knowing Zach. Two thousand years later. There's the famous tiny house. I don't know where you're gonna park that. You just leave the parking up to me, Ryan. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, this is Zach Giffen. <laughs> Hi, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> How's it going, bud? Ryan, it is gonna be so much fun. I guarantee you made the right decision here. All right, good, good. So, quick history. Zach is one of my dearest friends on all of planet Earth, probably the whole galaxy. I grew up with his older brother, and now I've kind of taken over Zach as my new bestie. <laughs> well, and I actually don't know anybody in Boulder anyways that I can call within like 48 hours they could potentially come on an adventure with me. So, yeah. Ryan, <laughs> you're the lucky guy. I forgot to really show you the star of the show, the tiny house. Zach, tell, uh, us, tell us about this thing. Well, this is the first tiny house I ever built, and I built it with outdoor research, and it was this amazing partnership where basically they paid for the materials, I built the house, and then I got to ski in it and live in it for about three years, and it was a pretty darn special moment in my life. Uh, and now this house is gone just about as far as any tiny house ever. Um, I don't know, 50,000 miles? Why does this thing need to go to Durango? It's got to go because there's something called the trail days and it's got to be at the trail day days. I don't think it's going to do any of the running, but it's got to be there at the start. So Durango is about eight hours away. We're not going to get there all in one day. We're going to stop and go on adventures. We really don't have any plan at all. And that's my favorite way to do adventures. And Zach has a handful of popcorn. Mm -hmm. oh, that's my favorite way to do adventures. <laughs> Whenever you hang out with Zach, you have to listen to reggae. It's the rule. Otherwise, you might drive too fast and crash. <laughs> Reggae just keeps you moving slow. Just your head bopping and you're just like, uh-huh. Yeah. Life is good. Life is good. For all of you not from Colorado, around the world, this area is called South Park. And this is where the cartoon is based off of. I want some cheesy puffs. Mom, give me some cheesy puffs. So we have decided to head toward Buena Vista, which in Spanish means good view. <laughs> I think it's actually Buena Vista. Buena Vista? Yeah, it's pronounced Buena Vista. Buena Vista. The gringos call it Buena but we call it Buena, and the Vista is very nice. Check it out. Oh my God. How are we doing, Zach? Well, this is definitely not the road that I had hoped that we would be taking the tiny house on. <laughs> It's kind of a four-wheel road here. But it looks beautiful. It is definitely beautiful. Yes! It smells so good up here, bud. This tiny house is in for a treat, which means we're in for a treat.
That's it. That's Look it. at that. The creek. Right here in the aspen trees. This is why we came. I like this spot. This is a really good spot. We're on our adventure! Perfect tiny house spot. Sun is on the solar panels. Free firewood. What could be better? We didn't buy any food. We're gonna have to go get food. <laughs> we didn't buy food. <laughs> we forgot food! We already ate our chips! I don't know what the temperature is. But it's very cold. There's frost, you can't see it on top of my little furry microphone. <laughs> but boy, was it a beautiful night. Those stars were absolutely incredible. I think those are some of the best stars I've ever seen in my life. Also because I got my, my laser eye surgery, I can see a lot better. Bam! Good morning, Zach! It's so cozy in here. Oh. Right, it's pretty cold. It's the Snickers of the cereal world. They made honey bunch of uh, oats. They just, they could have just stopped making cereal right then. So good. Zach and I were in the grocery store last night, and we both decided that honey bunches of oats was like top five cereal of all time. What do you think? I think it's higher than that. It's higher than I top five? It's, yeah, it's top the one three? to beat. You know, it's the defending champion. Yeah, it's like you know? kind of healthy, but it tastes like, you know, sugar cereal, which I never got as a kid. Oh, man, sugar cereal. How many bunches of votes? Please sponsor us. Cheers, bud. Ding. How many bunches of votes? Woo! Let's go. Woo! That'll wake you up in the morning. Woo! Zach, we've seen the tiny house from the outside quite a bit. Yes, we have. Everybody wants to see the inside. Can you give us a tour? I can do that for us. All right, let's do it. All right, are you sure you don't want to see the outside a little bit more? Because it's it's really beautiful, right? It it's is got so the beautiful. Theme here. You notice the two beer taps on the side? Oh yeah. That's not normal. Come on into the tiny house. This is Look so nice. All right, yeah. where, where should we start? Well, front door. You got two coat closets on either side. I think this is like entrance way. You know, there's not a whole lot going on. When you have kegs, this closet gets pretty full. Kegs uh, and beer. For, unfortunately, we don't have kegs right now. Oh. Then you walk into the main great room. You got the uh, wood stove on the on the left. Let's focus on that real quick. That's quite the wood stove. Okay, so the wood stove came from uh, Salina, Colorado. It came out of this gold mill. This guy had a bunch of them. I don't think it's really an antique, but it looks really nice. It's a coal stove, it's a boat in, it's a French company. Despite popular belief, this is not a ladder. This is where your clothes go to dry. But this is kind of the MVP of the entire place because without this wood stove, it wouldn't feel like a home very much. It would feel kind of cold and uncomfortable like a tough shed that you're trying to sleep in. <laughs> Over here, we have the couch. So this folds down and turns into a queen bed. Nice uh, bit of storage underneath. I kind of elevated it a little bit so you could get more there. Then you have the crowd pleaser, which is the spiral staircase. It's all about, okay, you don't want to have to have a ladder right in the center of the space. You want to be able to come from the side and then move up into the center. Oh, yeah. And that's what it does. So when you start, you're right here in the center. But as you move down, you're going to move to the side. Just grab on, and it's as easy as that. And now that brings me right into the kitchen. Kitchen dining room is kind of the same place. Um, not a whole lot to say about it. We got a hot water heater, six gallon hot water tank, 10 gallons of fresh water. We got an electric gas refrigerator. Right now, the good people at Outdoor Research, all they left me was a bunch of gin and vodka. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's nice, well, though. Yep. But when you're really thirsty at night, it doesn't do you very much. Anyways, um, over here, we got a solar generator pack, you can see from Goal Zero. We got two 90 watt um, solar panels on the top. We got another crowd pleaser, which is, this is just to hold all the 
the glasses in place so that they don't rattle around when you're traveling. You know, you're going to have two beer taps. you got to have some mugs. I'm a fan of how light it is, all the windows. Talk to me about these things. Well, definitely a big piece of it. Get the outside in. Uh, but this is actually not as intentional of a design, design decision as you might think. This was actually the result of being under the gun in terms of the time frame. And I could not find a big window like this that I could source in time. And I knew I could get the door. So I just got two doors, turned one of them into a window. And it works like this. Ah, oh, oh, isn't that nice? Hey guys. Oh, hey birdies. For everybody who wanted to know what this table thing is, it's not a table. It's a loft extension. You slide oh. it over. Zach, bring were you, that on. Were you, yeah. were you a fan of Transformers <laughs> as a kid? I'm still a fan of Transformers, friend. And voila. Now you have a guest bedroom, you got extra storage. What are the benefits of tiny, tiny living? Uh, you know, the benefits of tiny living are very large. Um, if you're talking about personally, it's about freedom. It's about freedom to pursue the life that you always envision for yourself and not get trapped by finances. Uh, if you're talking about society, I mean, we have a total global climate emergency. We need to reevaluate how we're, we're demanding energy for our happiness. Um, living smaller is about the single most attainable thing each individual person can do other than maybe not eating meat, Ryan. <laughs> but if, I'm a good vegetarian. <laughs> yeah, that's right. If you want to contribute less carbon emissions in life, uh, living smaller is a really great way to contribute less carbon in your day-to-day -day life uh, equal to transportation. So it's really important that we kind of move forward as a society and, and create rules that actually encourage this type of activity instead of make it illegal. So that's really what I'm doing. I'm a big advocate for the whole thing. Uh, I think it's about strengthening the fabric of society. I think it's about creating affordable housing that's attainable. I think it's about allowing us to address our need to lower our carbon emissions and our energy usage. And then I think it's just about freedom. Hey, I recognize that belt from TV. Ah, <laughs> this. These are the famous sus suspenders. This is where I get my power from. This is my socks. I've had smiley face suspenders ever since Paul bought them to for me when I was like 19. So that's 20 years of rocking smiley fa face suspenders. I guess it really is my thing. <laughs> I think the future of the tiny house movement is huge. I think it's going to be about uh, generating new housing options. It's going to be about the affordable housing crisis. It's going to be about the environmental emergency. It's going to be about preventing our country from being susceptible to another major housing downturn. So there's a lot of really big issues that tiny homes have in some part a, a role to play in. And I hope to help people be aware that they can actually make a difference. And what is the cheapest you could build one of these for? Uh, you can build it as cheap as you want, but I wouldn't recommend it. Yeah. I don't know. I think that tiny homes, if you're going to build it yourself, notice this one doesn't have a bathroom. I put about $31,000 into this home. You know, paid, paid a couple of friends, a little bit of work. But for the most part, that's just materials. Hey, Zach, I think we bent the chimney on the way up. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> just a couple tree branches, that's all. It's still there. 